Juggernaut. You don't see many scrolling beat em ups these days. It's all about these newfangled calls of duties and fork knives, whatever they are. Um, there are a couple of game devs, of course, that try and keep the old fashioned beat up everything that has nipples style of gameplay alive, but most notably, Koei Tecmo with their Dynasty Warriors series. Dynasty Warriors for you guys in America. But, uh, but that's a third person game, and the, the most recent entry into that series, number nine. Ooh. Ooh. It, they try to make it open world. It's all well and good being open world, but if that world is empty as ball bags, it's not going to be any good. But I digress. What about the side scrolling? Beat up everything that has nipple genre. You know, games that were made famous in the late 80s and early 90s with titles such as Streets of Rage, Final Fight, etc. I mean, sure. You have Beats of Rage on PC, which is a kind of homebrew, side-scrolling brawler engine that you can use to create your own games, and there is a plethora of mods available for that. But what about in the retail marketplace? You know, what about on PC and console? Surely we just haven't left the genre to die. Well, Making Games have released a new game in this old-fashioned, fun genre, uh, called Raging Justice, and it's available right now for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and the Nintendo Switch for a measly £9.99. But is it any good? Okay, let's play the game! Raging Justice, as mentioned before, is a side scrolling beat em up brawler. Uh, you can choose from three characters you have Rick Justice, which is the main character. You have Nikki Rage, which is his partner, and then you also have a 15-year-old boy called Ashley as your third and final character. Each one of them has their own strengths and weaknesses. Like for example, Rick Justice is the strong Mike Hagar type character. His punches do a lot of damage, but he can't really make good combos. Nikki Rage is a bit less powerful, but she's good with kicks and ground stomps. And Ashley King is the speed brawler. He doesn't do much power, but he can do large combos and a high flurry of fast power attacks. Gameplay is spread across nine stages and three difficulty levels, and you also have an arena style brawl mode in there as well. Enough about that. Let's discuss the elephant in the room, and that is the visual direction of the game. Not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> It's definitely unique, and I, you have to give credit to the developers for trying something new. Uh, this this type of visuals is a mixture between Killer Instinct's pre-rendered early 1990s visuals and, and claymation. For me personally, I tried to like it, but it just doesn't gel with me. It, it just looks awkward. Uh, some of the, the character drawings are awkward too. Still, some are humorous, you know, like the, the big chubby guys, for example. They're humorously designed. They look pretty good. But there are other frames of animation. For example, when Rick picks up a crate or what have you, he looks like he's got a stickle brick jammed right up his arse. All of the characters have a kind of motion blur pre-baked into their animation frames and uh, while this can look good on some attacks for example with Ashley King because he's a quick moving character with lots of flurries of punches and kicks it looks pretty good and then on the flip side of that you have some bosses there's one boss in particular actually where the motion blur makes it look like the, f the character only has two frames of animation in certain attacks it looks ridiculous it's a very mixed bag visually but once you get over the visual style, you get to see the game's merits. What sets Raging Justice apart from its contemporaries, aside from the visual aesthetics, is the good cop bad cop system. You don't have to kill everybody on the screen. You can subdue them once they're dazed and handcuff them and arrest them which is kind of neat and this ties into a multiple ending scenario you've got a good cop ending and a bad cop ending if you get all of the warrants on the level you also get bonuses because there are challenges like that in each and every level you've got things like beat the level in five minutes you've got run seven people over with a lawnmower 
that kind of thing. It adds to the longevity of the game and gives you a bit of an extra challenge, something worth coming back to to com try and complete once you've seen everything that the game has to offer over its nine quite small levels. While the levels may be small, they certainly pack a challenge. The enemies in this game are relentless. They will not hesitate about beating you into a corner and then beating you some more and then throwing a trash can in your face for good measure. It's quite hard. I was playing on normal difficulty and I, I was finding it a challenge to be honest. It took me several attempts to actually get through the game. Luckily, there is a continue system in place, although for some reason you can't switch your character at the continue stage. It's a bit of a baffling design choice, and I think it's uh, an oversight on, on making games part. The great fighting games like Final Fight and Streets of Rage always let you select your character when you started a new credit. I don't see why this should be any different. But I digress, the controls are tight, the control method is logical, it's comfortable, and you can get some pretty decent combos going once you get to know the characters. And get to know them you will, this game has a sense of humour, and each one of the three main characters has some good one-liners, and some of the enemies do too, yeah, it makes it quite entertaining. I wish the same could be said about the music though. The music, unlike say, Yuzo Koshiro's masterpiece on Streets of Rage and yes I have to bring up Streets of Rage again because it's probably the finest scrolling beat-em-up ever made. Streets of Rage 3 at least. I know, wait 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 wait, I know you guys say Streets of Rage 2 but Streets of Rage 3 is just better. Okay? It's just, it just is. But that's another conversation for another video. Raging Justice music is forgettable. It's, it's accomplished. It's high quality. But it's forgettable, it's it's cinematic background noise, it's elevator music compared to the rest of the action. The sound effects for the rest of the action, however, are pretty decent, you know, they're kind of fun. But is the game fun? Well, there's two answers to that really. In two player mode, I, which I played with my son, he had a great time and I had good times just watching him have fun. You know, two-player mode for this type of game is is what it's designed for. For some reason, though, there is no online multiplayer, though, and that's a huge oversight by the developers. Why, in this day and age, does a scrolling beat-em-up not have online co-op? It's ridiculous, and it instantly gets knocked a point off for that. Especially when you consider that the game's got online leaderboards. Come on, think, people. Not everybody can sit at their couch every time they want to play a game with their buddies. Some of us have to work shifts. Some of us work far, far away. Some of us can only play with our friends online at some points in our lives. Not being able to play a game like this online is... Stupid! You're so stupid! In single player mode, cracks do start to show. I mentioned before that the levels are quite short. Well, they're quite short despite the game artificially extending them by quite a way. You'll see that bosses from the first level get integrated in into the second level as regular enemies. Enemies from the second level will get integrated into level 3 as regular enemies and it just barrel rolls on and on and on. There's not enough differentiation in the enemies as well. You're fighting the same group of, I don't know, maybe 8 characters throughout the entirety of the game with the exception of the boss battles that I mentioned earlier. Monotony does creep in quite early on in Raging Justice. Cracks really do start to show the more that you spend time with it, especially if you spend time with it in a particularly long session, like an hour or so. Uh, the, the game the game has its problems. I did touch upon earlier the fact that enemies will bash you into a corner and then relentlessly beat you down. There is no protection for the player from this happening. It will absolutely smash you. You can lose entire health bars just by getting hit once. Uh, there was an instance where I got hit by the first vehicle in a cavalcade of, of cars and, and motorbikes. The first vehicle hit me, I had no idea it was coming, and then every single motorbike that followed hit me while I was still on the ground. I couldn't even get up. And it was super frustrating and I lost a life because of it. These kind of 
problems should be ironed out at the bug testing stage. It's really unpleasant for the player to experience when you die for no reason, you know, that you can't escape. And this is a problem that becomes more and more evident when you look at some of the enemies. The enemies have unblockable attacks where they'll charge up and the only thing that you can do is run. But as I mentioned before, if you're stuck in an animation where you're doing a kick or a punch, you may not be able to run before their charge actually fires off and hits you. Or, heaven forbid, you get stunned by another enemy. Um, it, it just, yeah, it's, it's annoying. It's really annoying. There are problems like that evident throughout the entirety of the game. Which is a shame. Also, there's no variety in levels. They all move left to right. There's no elevator levels that were so popular in this genre. There's no right to left levels. There's no change up whatsoever. Um, I'm not sure if there are hidden characters. I haven't found any yet. But the three characters, while they are varied within themselves, aren't enough to warrant several playthroughs of the game. There's just It just needs something more, something fresh, which never seems to come. So, with all of that taken into account, can I recommend Raging Justice? Well, for £9.99, you can do a lot worse than Raging Justice. It is fun, um, while it is short-lived fun, admittedly. It's, it's good in two-player. My son loved playing with me. Um, it's something that we could do as a, as a team, and he really thrives in that type of game. He doesn't have much experience with this genre. He's played Turtles in Time and a couple of others. So to him, it was it was new and it was really cool. So if you haven't played the kings of the genre, perhaps you'll really get a kick out of this. Or if you just want to harken back to the olden days and play something that reminds you of better days, then Raging Justice will do you right there too. But if you're looking for something with longevity, if you're looking for something with with polish and finesse and style that you could really appreciate and get your teeth sunk into, Raging Justice won't be for you. Raging? More like a seething, stormy, infuriating 5 out of 10. If you can get around the art style, you can find fun, and I'm sure this game will find its niche. However, the lack of enemy variety, the lack of level variety, and the lack of online multiplayer just means that I can't justify giving it a higher rating, despite its low price tag. So all that's left to be said now, again, is thank you to Team17 and Making Games for sending me the free review copy of this game. And you guys, have you played the game yet? It's been out for a day now. Do you agree with my review? Do you think I was a little harsh? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, bye.